what is it that you're really seeking? Mm-hmm. What is it in that bread that's offered to you? Yeah. What is that What is that filling in and you? And we're not saying what is it that you know you should be seeking. No, no, no. Because we all know what we should right. be seeking. But right. what is it that you're really seeking? Yeah. And like, is it validation? Yes. And where is that half-truth? Like, how do we uncover right. that? Ooh. And how do we reorder it? And that's that's Lent, right? Making straight yes. our path. How do we reorder that yeah. to allow that to be led by God? Welcome to Beyond Sunday, a podcast for parents like us who are living our best Lent. (laughs) Actually, no. (laughs) We're just striving to weave that Sunday and Lenten experience into the everyday moments of our week. I'm your co-host, Nicole Joyce. And I'm Rocky McCormick, your other co-host. Pull up a chair, put your phone on silent, or hide in the bathroom if you must. (laughs) But join us as we talk, laugh, and sometimes cry about our experiences raising Catholic families and discovering God within our everyday lives. So not your best Lent. No. Not my best Lent either. <laughs> I mean, we've been living Lent for like six years. So like, <laughs> what even is Lent? But oh, a journey hurts. back to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, no. <laughs> Whew, I think I think we've gotten a little slap happy this Lent, maybe. A little bit. A little bit. It's the darkness. It's mm-hmm. February. It's so dark. <sighs> All right confession or maybe a a brag since you're talking about our best Lent ever and I feel very Matthew Kelly when we say that so I'm not going to say that again uh what (laughs) I have no problem with Matthew Kelly I am not him Um, Matthew Kelly if you're listening we did not mean any offense oh no not at all I'm just not going to steal his bit what was your best Lenten sacrifice that you remember or and here's the other question I have are there any funny stories or things that you are not allowed to give up as a Lenten sacrifice. Ooh. So I am definitely not allowed to give up sugar. Oh. I did that one year. Yeah. I was very cranky. Okay. It was not a pleasant experience no. in my household. Huh. My husband won't let me give up coffee. Oh. Partially for my health, but also for the health of the family. Because as we say, our penance shouldn't be a penance for everyone around you. Amen. So. <laughs> I, and that's exactly what happened with sugar, yeah. right? Yeah. And and I I think after the sugar incident, I've been much more intentional and realistic about how I do that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. it's like Lent isn't a diet plan. It's not like a chance for us to, you know do some sort of a cleanse. I mean, it is right. a cleanse, but not But in not that, that kind of cleanse, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually have a really, I had a very fruitful Lent mm. last Lent. Oh. Um, when I was still living that 700-day year right? of 2021. Right. Um, where so I... So Lent 2.0. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and like, it was it was not a great Lent, like, generally speaking. I mean, when is Lent ever great? No. But it was, it was not one where I really felt like, yes, this has been really mm. fruitful. This has really been really helpful. Because I, I think we all probably have one that we can think of where we were like, man, like, I really, I could you know, tangibly like sense that, that something was working in me Mm -hmm. and that was not last Lent, um, at least not in the beginning. So what happened is like right before Lent began last year, I was approached by a priest and he had, um, rescued this like embroidered embellishment to Mm. go on a vestment. And it was like hand embroidered Fancy. and it had all these bees on it. It was beautiful. It had to be like over 100 years old. I mean, it oh, was wow. very old. Um, but it was like starting to kind of fall apart. Like some mm. of the beads were coming off and like there was this corded kind of border that was coming off. And he was like, do you think you can fix this and like attach it to my vestment? And I don't know. I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but I I am a novice seamstress. So yeah, I make a lot of clothes. Novice, novice. I do some, you know. You're an incredible seamstress. Thank you. Thank you. And, but I have never done anything on this level. Like beadwork. Level. Yeah, beadwork, okay. no embroidery, not my thing. I've okay. done a few things, but not much. And so I was like, you know what? I like I could try my best. Like I, I can't guarantee anything. Like how expensive is right. this? And he was well, like. destroying an yeah, antique. Right. Like am I, <laughs> is this like an heirloom? And then your mom is going to be mad and come after me? Like I don't know. And and he said the most profound thing like that I think we all uh-huh. sometimes need to hear. He's like, he's like, you know what, Nicole? It's okay. It's just stuff. He was like, as long as you try, like, it's just stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And that just really, like. That's so freeing. Made me, yeah. I was like, oh, oh. sweet. Because, you know, as mentioned previously, I have worked in other places where we engraved things. Uh-huh. And sometimes people would bring things that were, like, totally irreplaceable. And oh I was my. like, nope, nope, I am not Mm-mm. doing that. So in this case, it was very freeing for him to be yeah. like, it's just a thing. And it's just, it's just stuff. And it's okay. And I was like, okay. okay. So Let I decided go. I was going to try it. So I spent, like 
probably an hour or two every day for like a week trying to reattach these beads that were coming oh my gosh. disconnected. Um, I thought I had it all put back together. I thought uh-huh. everything was good. I go to attach it to the vestment and I'm starting to stitch it up and like everything starts unraveling. Oh my gosh. Not my work, but like the actual threads that were holding it oh, in so were, were like, like disintegrating. disintegrating. Oh my yes. goodness. So like the, the, the thread was just like, like disintegrating into dust and like the cording around the edges was Linton. just completely unsalvageable and it, yeah it was, oh my gosh it was so lenty <laughs> <laughs> that's my new word by the linty. way new favorite it. adjective fantastic and so it ended up caught taking much longer mm-hmm. for me to finish this you know he gave it to me like I think the week before Lent began and he wanted it by Holy Thursday hmm. and so at the time I was like oh that's like you sure, know 53 days weeks. like I can do that yeah. and then it was like the week before Holy Thursday was when I finally did finish it so it oh, did wow. take a long time and but you still finished it. I did finish it and and I just remember thinking like through the whole thing like this is so penitential <laughs> because yeah. this is not my favorite thing to do like usually as a seamstress I'm creative right I'm, I'm picking out fabric and designing my own stuff and you mm-hmm. know making it look the way I want it this was not any of those things this was just me trying to restore something yeah. that I did not make right and yeah. and so it was really challenging for me and it took until maybe like three or four weeks after Easter it was probably right before Pentecost where um looking back on it and just seeing the pictures mm. like I think they just showed up like yeah. in my photo roll or Your something memories or whatever yeah and I and I it was at that point that I looked at it and was just like man like this is so um this was so provident like obviously i needed that yeah. experience of 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 doing something difficult and kind of almost feeling like it was um fruitless yeah. in some way in the beginning kind of like sisyphus you know like <laughs> every time i do this something else falls off here um but also like what a beautiful gift of sacrificial love because it wasn't something you necessarily would have taken on on your own I, or never, enjoyed or maybe do again never and and like really but like out of love for this and maybe priest. not even for a different priest right <laughs> So this one's got to feel real right, special. Right, better feel really special. No, I just... Give you your golden ticket to heaven <laughs> if, if the one such exists. But kind of like the message I took away, like after, you know, like I got to see yeah. him wear it at, at Holy Thursday Mass. Oh. He wore it at the Easter Vigil. Oh, beautiful. Um, and like really the message that I took away is like, we're probably, some of us have entered into Lent already feeling a little unraveled or disheveled <laughs> in some sense. It's a perpetual state for um, some of it us. It is a perpetual state, right? Like we're always like, it, right. it kind of feels like as soon as we, we patch one thing back up, something else falls. And certainly it feels that way when you're raising children in your house. <laughs> um, but like really, if we're willing to lean in mm-hmm. to that experience of never being in perfect state, of always having something that's unraveled or disheveled or yeah. disintegrating. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, and, and we really invite the Lord to come into those wounds, into that experience of being broken. Mm. Um, he's He's there and he will repair us, right? He'll yeah. stitch us back up. And, and so I think my goal this Lent is really having learned that last Lent, uh-huh. leaning into this experience um, and, and saying like, Lord, I want you in this, yeah. like in the life I have right now, in the right. life I'm living, like I want you here. I'm not going to try to make not it this the life wonderful. of your vision board. Yes. Yes. Not, not right. that new year's resolution right. that we don't know where that, where went. that even is. Yeah. <laughs> not in your planner that is no longer being filled out. Fair enough. <laughs> right. But like, this is the life I have mm-hmm. and I want you in this life. I'm not going to say, oh, I need to clean this up first before I invite you in. Yeah. Well, and really what's the invitation? He's already there. Yes. Amen. Like he doesn't, he doesn't Mm -hmm. wait on us. I mean, Mm -hmm. he will wait on us to act because love is never forced upon us. But really, and this brings me back to my, one of my words of the year um, is shalom. Mm -hmm. But like that meaning of wholeness Mm -hmm. and that peace that is the wholeness as we reside in God. And so it makes me think of the gospel this weekend in a strange way. Bear with me. I think if we focus on the little pieces that are falling apart, and I know I have a ten- tendency to do that. I'm a, I'm a fatalistic thinker. Like, it's what I focus on. But in doing that, we miss the bigger picture of the beauty that God is restoring. Mm. Always, always restoring. Because that is that is God at work. Mm. Always restoring us to himself. And so this weekend, we hear about the temptation of Jesus in the desert. And we've heard this story a lot of times. Sometimes when we hear stories multiple times you kind of tune out but as I was praying with it what really struck me is how the devil uses half truths to begin to lead us away from wholeness in God Mm. so he's speaking into these pieces that we want restored but he's only giving us half the story 
And so what we see is, of course, Jesus is the word of God. So kind of a fool's errand there. Um, So he knows and is the fullness of truth and can respond to each invitation by grounding it in the complete story. So for every scripture the devil throws at Jesus, he's got another one to be like, yeah, but no. Right. Yeah, but no. But it makes me think of how we forget who we are sometimes, not because of the alternatives presented to us are a complete fabrication, but somehow it uses just a sliver of truth to begin to make us doubt or to begin to show us a counterfeit of who we were created mm-hmm. to be. And isn't so, that like the whole of hum- the oh, human it's experience? Humanity. I mean, right. that's- it's fighting against that. Yes. Right. But how important it is for us as servant of God, Sister Thea Bowman reminds us to know who we are and whose we are. I just quoted her yesterday. Did you? Mm-hmm. Well, it is. You know, it's Black History quote, Month, it's so, so real. Bring yes. It in. Mm-hmm. Right. No, I love her so much. Uh, and we're always in the desert in some way. Mm-hmm. Like I mentioned before, you know, it seems like Lent has lasted a really, really long time. But maybe the challenge of this particular Lent is to find and recognize that God is in those desert places mm-hmm. already. He's already here yes. with us, wherever our desert is. And then to begin to understand the bigger picture of what he's doing in our lives and through our lives, even in the desert. So I have two thoughts here. One is okay. that I think it's really hard as as adults, especially because we have so many old wounds and mm. things that, and baggage that mm-hmm. we bring into Lent. Mm-hmm. Um, and so our natural instinct just as humans Mm -hmm. is to like want to be in defensive mode Mm -hmm. and so yes the lord is here but like how willing are we to share that with him right Mm -hmm. like if we don't bring that to him and say like we want you in this then we're kind of closing ourselves off to any type of of transformation or healing that he has to offer Um, but then i think secondly as parents this is really important because our kids are growing up in this world filled with nothing but half truth mm-hmm. and outright lies right right like oh you know sometimes lies they're disguised as, as truth yeah they're disguised yeah. as half truths or as truth but but it's such a challenge to discern the fullness of truth in some of those situations for ourselves and for our children mm-hmm. and the perfect example we talk about this all the time like i think the whole world is talking about this all the time <laughs> is these social media platforms oh, yeah. especially the ones with super short videos um with a name that sounds like a clock right and our kids you know, they need that reminder constantly that like what we see on these is rarely a full truth. Well, it can't be. It's too short. It's too short, right? And it's it's, it's, it's never showing enough. And even the vulnerability is chosen vulnerability. Yeah. So nobody has like a secret hidden camera somewhere. I'm only going to share you this one Right, so I'm crying on the floor, but I'm showing you what I want to show you of me crying on the floor. Yeah, yeah. And so when we fill our whole lives with these half-truths, these unrealistic expectations even. Mm -hmm. Um, It just leaves us in the desert so much more, you know, and and then we now we have this whole generation of young people who are just experiencing so much loneliness and despair. Right, because for being as connected as we are, we're also so isolated behind our screens. Yeah. And it messes with our understanding of who we are created to be Mm. and our expectation of how life is supposed to go. Mm-hmm. But it's so tempting. It is. I mean, it's cute. Right? Like, oh, Jesus was hungry. Right. And he was like, hey, here's some why bread. Why don't you just do this thing and I have mean, this bread? And I mean, hey, people could come at me with bread and little butter. I, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> just saying. I like bread. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is so but. And this is something that I struggle with, and it's something that I talk to my children about, too. Like, the quick fix Mm -hmm. is rarely the long-term answer. Mm. That quick satisfaction or that immediate gratification doesn't actually help us. Mm -hmm. And I think we live in a culture that is so filled with immediate gratification. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, that's that's the driving force behind it. Well, that's not how the fruits of the spirit work. And and that's why these platforms have have taken off so much, right? Because that's exactly what they're meant to do. It's just give you that one thing that you need and Mm -hmm. it's super quick and and then you just keep coming back for more. Yeah. Man, man. But then that sets us up for such struggle in those desert places when life 
doesn't give us what we want immediately yeah, because it doesn't. It's a sure. long game. And and just like every platform out there, like it probably started with a lot of young people, but now it is most definitely flooded with people of all ages. And so mm-hmm. even as adults, as parents, we are seeing these images of these parents who are just portraying that everything in their house is wonderful right. and everything is always clean and like watch me reorganize my walk-in pantry right which was not needing reorganization <laughs> to be in <laughs> Right. I mean, I always love that. Oh, my house is such a mess. And they have like three things out of place. I'm like, no, yeah. no. Yeah. And so like, I think as parents, yeah. that's a perfect example of this half truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and really like that, where that stems, I think and another really great example is like pretty much any mom war oh my you gosh. could ever think about yeah. working, staying home, brick and mortar school, homeschool, public, Catholic, breastfeeding, bottle feeding, baby food, baby led weaning. Like oh I gosh. could just keep going right. for so long. For every age and every stage. <laughs> Yes. Every, and the temptation yeah. is real. Like, oh, it is. well, if you're really a good mom, you'll do this one thing. Well, then I feel like there's the unique Catholic twist to that, too. Oh, yes. Right. Like we, we add in instead of separating. I think there's a, a temptation to add into that to be like, oh, but to be a good Catholic mom, then you got to do X, Y and Z mm-hmm. as well. But it's all taking something that's good because each of those things are good. There's nothing inherently wrong necessarily with any of those things, but it's twisting it into something that is not necessarily good for everyone or it's making it it's like um, giving it a place of primacy that isn't true. Yes, that half truth is so right tricky because it's so easy for us in our rush to experience yeah. a sense of accomplishment to be like, okay, I, I can do that thing. Check. Yes. Done. And done. Then, well, it makes it a silver bullet. Yeah. And there is no such thing. It's like it's making one experience the silver bullet we're all looking for mm-hmm. to be certain that we and our kids are going to be okay. And it just doesn't exist. Yeah. It doesn't. There's There are no shortcuts to holiness. Yes. And, and I, again, it's part of that immediate gratification. Like if we just do these things and we stay on this script, then we're good. Yeah. But we know the story. Mm-hmm. We know God's promise is salvation doesn't matter how windy the road is that mm-hmm. gets us there. We know the story ends well, so we have to stay rooted in that and remember that it's a long game. But we don't we don't always feel confident in no. that, right? Like no. especially during Lent when we're just like fighting this uphill battle already and it's yeah. like rainy and it's cold and it's February in yeah, Michigan. It's not a pleasant time to no. be in Michigan. No. <laughs> in um and I and I think like as parents we always hope that we have the silver bullet and what's really a wake-up call for us and kind of that moment of like coming to the full truth is um realizing and being willing to change course you know we talked about this before like sometimes we're committed to like one side or the other of doing of being a parent in this one way Mm -hmm. um and then realizing that that's not really what's going to work or what works for us is actually this combination of things even if they're not ideal Mm -hmm. that's just what's working for like the life we're living right now the moment we're in right now so i guess what i'm saying is that we're all in this desert and we're all hearing some combination of half truths most of the time but willingness to lean into that and realize like the here I am in the desert. Yeah. Well, and also I think leaning into the, the half truth to the, what is it I'm really seeking? Mm-hmm. Why is this attractive to me? But isn't that scary for someone? Oh, to, so much. For someone to like, like I mean, I'm just thinking to myself even, no, but like too. if someone comes up to you and asks you like, what do you really want? I don't isn't know. that such a scary <laughs> question? Like, because I'm kind of afraid that if I answer that honestly, I'm not yeah. going to like what comes out. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. But those are the conversations that we need to have. Yes. What is it that you're really seeking? Mm-hmm. What is it in that bread that's offered to you? And what is that What is that filling in and you? And we're not saying what is it that you know you should be seeking. No, no, no. Because we all know what we should right. be seeking. But right. what is it that you're really seeking? Yeah, and like, is it validation? Yes. And where is that half-truth? Like, how do we uncover right. that? Ooh. And how do we reorder it? And that's that's Lent, right? Making straight yes. our path. How do we reorder that yeah. to allow that to be led by God? Mm. You know, so maybe Lent is an invitation to grow in patience and not seek immediate gratification, but to really sit in that discomfort and with God wrestle with why it is that we're uncomfortable. Oh, that sounds so terrible. It does so <laughs> awful. I'm like, my name is not Jacob. You will not name me Israel. I will not wrestle. There I would like a nap. No wrestle. They will no <laughs> Get off each other. I mean, how often but does I that mean, happen yes, in our own right? Yeah, so but, terrible. Yeah, but you know, the invitation is to repent and to believe, to rethink, to to reorder our lives. Mm-hmm. And God loves us, and so the desires of our hearts are His desire. Mm. But how how do we 
go after that? How do we seek to fill that for us and for our children in a way that is not leading us further away from God or isn't cutting God out of the equation? Because I'm a control freak. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I mean, there are times when I seek the shortcut because I know what the end will be because I have control over that. Oh, you said the C word. Uh Uh-huh. Control. Yeah. We we want that so So much. Desperately. So desperately. Life is such a mess. Like, I want control over these things. But we try to disguise it as oh, yeah. like, you know, this is a good thing. Like you and said, it is, these are good things. They're not not good so things. So we try to say like, well, I just want what's good. And it's like, mm, but if we I want really, what I say is good. Yes. <laughs> right. If we really look closely, is that really what you're seeking? Is the good thing or is it the control? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And that's really hard when it comes to our children. Mm-hmm. Because try as I might don't get to control them (laughs) at all. (laughs) And so walking in that desert space of, okay, Lord, where are we going with this? Yeah. And inviting our children into that too, you know, to know what is the desire? Why, why this behavior? What was it that you were seeking? Mm -hmm. And how might we do that in a way that is more life giving Mm. for everyone involved? Well, that's rough when they're um, coming to that age where mm-hmm. they want to kind of separate themselves from you. And I know some of you are thinking that I'm talking about teenagers, but really I'm talking about three-year-olds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Where, like, it doesn't everything start so they early. Say is no. 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 <laughs> no. You know, they always said, they always like warn you about the two-year-olds. It's not the two-year-olds. No. It's the three-year-olds who have the ability of the two-year-olds with the knowledge, with the the understanding of yes. this is how I use that. Yes. So my my second born is 13 now, but we yeah. always talk about how what his favorite word when he was three and four was mm-hmm. no K. No K. I love that. And so it, sweet. it just so perfectly oh, embodied yeah. that toddler experience of like, I want to do what you're saying because it does sound very cool, but also I want to be my own person right. and say no. So I'm just going to say no, okay. okay. I love that. And we were like, what does it mean? Is I think it that no? should be a word. Is it okay? <laughs> Which one is Can I it? say that to my children? <laughs> no, okay. No, okay. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yes, but it just yeah. it just so perfectly embodied that experience right. of like, I want some control, mm-hmm. but I know that's a good thing. How do I... How right. do I reconcile that? So I feel like we're all kind of toddlers when it comes to God. <laughs> like, it's that perpetual like... <laughs> Things come out of my mouth when I'm talking to my children, and I'm like, oh, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, I love you, Mom. If you love me, you would do what I'm asking you to do. Mm. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have said <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, okay, I heard that. <laughs> but yeah, if you have the silver bullet to how you let go of control, just let me know. Mm. I might, I might. Well, I'll get back to you. Okay, cool. In, you know, 40, 50 years. Maybe. <laughs> It take me that long it might, sure. I, I don't know if we'll ever have that mm-hmm. answer no. right no Mm-mm. no Mm-mm. well you know that actually makes me think of um this idea of living in the desert knowing mm-hmm. that that's where we are but also knowing that like easter will be here easter mm-hmm. will still come jesus right. has risen it has happened it is historical and real right and i think um remembering that we should always be keeping our, our eyes on that, even in those really difficult moments. Sure. Even when your toddler is screaming, no, okay, <laughs> in the middle of mass, laying on the floor. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus said, so let the little scary. children come to me. He didn't say they weren't supposed to be rowdy. <laughs> he is still here. And, and yeah. so like really clinging to that, like the resurrection is still real. It still happened. Yeah. And that is the challenge though, right? Like when you're stuck in that desert place, it can be so hard to focus on anything but the thirst Mm -hmm. and the need and the discomfort with no visible way out and still say he is good. Mm -hmm. You know, parents grieve their children. It's an unimaginable loss, losing our livelihoods, losing our homes, children going astray. You know, they're intense desert spaces. And it can it can sound trite to be like yes, but Jesus is risen. Yeah, I mean yes, but I just think of Mother Teresa. You know, used to say something like, "Never let yourself be so filled with sorrow that you forget the joy of Christ risen." Mm. She wasn't saying don't, don't feel be sorrow, yeah, yeah, but never be so filled with that that you forget the joy of Christ risen. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, I'm anti-pithy phrases all the time that never, <laughs> you know, you, you're sad. <laughs> oh, just be happy. That, does that ever make you right. feel better, helpful? right? Like, That's yeah, helpful. choose joy. Well, I would love to choose joy, but right now I'm pretty miserable. Yeah. You know, so someone in the depths of suffering, that's not truly helpful, but, but that's not what I mean. I think in those moments, the challenge, you know, it really, it becomes to allow ourselves to honestly experience that pain, mm-hmm. but then also help one another remain tethered to that hope of Christ. So mm-hmm. it's like that lifeline. So we're not lost to the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. And even in the stories of the different disciples, you see that tension. Like, do we see the desert as just a permanent location? Or do we see the desert of Lent, however long our Lent feels, as being a path to the joy of resurrection? Mm. Is it a path? Or is it like quicksand and we're stuck? Ooh, that quicksand feeling. Mm Mm-hmm. That's inescapable. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we get out of there? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So do we, I think we have an action item this week. We do. In 52 Sundays, actually, um, I think there was uh, a suggestion of a uh, family examine, maybe. But um, I do really think that another way we could do this is to talk about trust. Mm. And there's a really wonderful prayer. You can probably look it up on the Google (laughs) (laughs) called the litany of trust. Yeah, it is beautiful. And it's just so beautiful. And some of those, um, some of those response, some of those responding to some of those really hurts. Right. Um, from, from our own desires and from, from desire for recognition. I think some of those are really painful, but, um, for parents, but I think just teaching our kids to say like, you know, Jesus delivered me and Jesus, I trust in you. I think that is so um, simple, even yeah. for the littlest oh, of our kids to to start having that be something that just comes off our tongue in a moment of... Right, even if it's just one or two of those phrases yes. that they really take to heart, like from the fear that I am unlovable. Yeah. Deliver me. Because yeah. you are, yeah. right? You are the beloved. Or mm. this is the one that I get stuck on, <laughs> from the fear that trusting you will leave me more destitute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right? Like, isn't that the fear? Like, okay, if I do whatever God tells me, Yes. I'm going to be miserable. Like, is that the motivation behind everything we do? Right. Are we? Are we yeah. Right. Oh so, my gosh. anyway. Yes. Litany of Trust, you guys. Definitely check that out. Look it up. I think it's beautifully done. And, of course, feel free to add your own yeah. prayers to Whatever that. Whatever you're Whatever struggling with. Whatever it is. Deliver us. Yes. And for our little people, too. I think yeah. it's just, um, it's such a beautiful thing to see those I think it would be those. a beautiful thing to invite them to create their own. What are you struggling mm, with? Yeah. Let's pray. Oh, that's adorable. Makes me wish my kids were still tiny just a little bit. (laughs) Just a little. But maybe not three. No. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you for listening to Beyond Sunday, a podcast about leaning in, surrender, and finding God in the messy everyday moments of family life. Find more episodes at 52sundays.com slash podcast or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.